Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. Got a great show lined up. We'll get started with weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin Road and Highway 77. Their motto is where a year's effort is worth a lifetime of rewards. Run by and check out all the programs they have there, nursing, welding, computer programs, all kind of stuff. Today, now, we're still, we got a little raining pattern coming back. We talked yesterday about maybe it might dry up a couple of days, but uh, raining pattern setting back in about 30 to 40. I'm sorry, we got a 60% chance of rain. We had 30 yesterday. It's going from 30 up to 60%. High today only going to be 87 and low tonight 76. The water temperature, we talked about it yesterday, as hot as it's been all year. It's going up to 86 degrees. Okay, now let's take a look at our river readings. Apalachicola is, you know, is in pretty good shape now compared to what it's been the last three or four weeks. It's reading right here at a 7.3, and that used to be anywhere at 6 or 7, just good river readings. And, and uh, it's level off, not much movement going on in it. The Chocolate Hatch at Caraville, taking a look at it, again, it's level off. So we don't have a lot of, of moving water in the river as far as up and down. It's just got a really good steady flow. It's reading right at 8 foot this morning, okay? Our marine forecast now, the marine forecast, we're looking at a, uh, a west of 5 to 10. And a lot of times we, we joke about doubling those numbers, but it, it was a little rough. Talk to some people who went out yesterday, it was a little rough on them. They didn't think it was going to be quite that rough, but, but it was, okay? All right, that takes care of our, our weather, and we'll take our break and be right back. All right, welcome back and a good morning to Ronnie Groom. Good morning, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing good. Always oh, great to have Ronnie on. And, and for quite some time now, I've been after Ronnie. Bring some of those old pictures and all. And, and uh, he's, you've been digging around and found we some. we got some history here. <laughs> well, we're going we're gonna to start on that. But how's everything been going, first of all? Everything's going good. Uh, it's been a yes, good summer. Yes, it has. And uh, if it'll just slow down on the rain. We need the rain, but not all at once. Boy, it has been such an unusual summer as far it as the rain. Has. You know, we had several years of almost drought. Now we're yep. getting plenty, but we need the water. We really do. Well, we're talking about the cycles of nature, uh, life cycles, and all, and how how you, you know we've had this drought for a couple of years now, and yep. now we're in a wet spell, and, and it'll come back in for yep. long. We've been in a dry yep. spell. It'll dry out eventually. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we I mentioned the other day on the show we lost uh, Bill Tant, one of our you know original divers, and, yeah, and I was your a name to Bill. He was a yep. fine fella. And I know you had a lot of dealings with him because the two of you. They all were the first ones really diving all. Yeah. And, and, and it really uh, made me think about you. That's why I'm, I'm glad you brought these pictures and all. You could, we, we're talking about my book on the history of fishing and all, but you probably could have done a book with all these pictures on diving and all these <laughs> stories. So, yeah, it's been interesting, to say the least. Uh, and people don't realize when, when you first started diving how, how hard and difficult it was to, to just yeah. get air. Yeah, you know, it was, it was really difficult. You know, I started when I was probably around 12 years old diving around the old Cove Hotel dock down there. Yes. Just free diving. And we free dived for a long time. And finally, we, we had access to some scuba gear, which was a tremendous advantage. But, uh, you know, the first set of gear we had, to, to scuba gear, came from France. They didn't even have it here. And then U.S. divers opened up in California. Mm -hmm. You know, Cousteau invented the, the double hose regulator. It was really primitive, but it was great to us back in those days. Right. So it's come a long way, and it's so much safer now. Well, y'all ever find it around that old Cove Hotel? Y'all ever find any old artifacts, old bottles, anything like that? Or yeah, just you know, for fish? there was all kind of artifacts and things on these wrecks, but, uh, you know, the only thing we were interested in as young boys was shooting fish. Shooting the fish, that's right. The bigger right. the better, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we, we had, really had a good time, and we learned a lot, and uh, it, it's, been, it's been an exciting career. Yeah. Well, let's look at this first picture here. Uh, Ron, tell us about this first this big brim you got here. <laughs> this is a Jewfish. We used to call them Jewfish. Now they're Goliath grouper. That's correct. And uh, you wanted to say something about that boat, Well, too. the first thing, of course, I, I saw the fish, of course, the first thing I see. But then I looked in the background, and on yesterday's show, I just happened to, to pull out a, uh, I've got an old Carter craft, and, and I pulled out some pictures, took it out in, in the uh, driveway the other day, just cleaned it up a little bit, took some pictures of it, showed it on the show, and lo and behold, that's that exact boat, that 1957, 58 model Carter craft, you can see by the fins, and I just, I said, oh my goodness, look at that. And uh, you you had one of those boats, right? Right. Uh, 
They were many, good boats, they, too. They were good boats. Not many, not many of those boats left. No. Manufactured right here in Panama City. Yep, yep. And it's, it's, fasc Park. it's fascinating, so uh, that, that, that stood out. But how, how big was that uh, Goliath grouper? That one's around 400. 400 pounds. How did, how did y'all get them up? <laughs> uh, well, you know, we started out shooting just Hawaiian slings, a little hollow thing with a, just like a slingshot, you pull it back and let it go. And then we had what we call big guns to shoot them with, the, the big fish. We had to have those, a, a larger gun, and uh, you just shoot them and wrestle them up. You know, if you could shoot them and then get up and get them in the gills uh -huh. and top of the mouth and point them up, if they swam, they had to go up. Yeah. And then we had, had a six-foot gaff hook with a tremendous-sized okay. gaff on it. All right, now what about this uh, set of pictures here? This is a, a Warsaw grouper here. Now, these came off the uh, old stage one offshore out there, and yeah. I've got a picture of that one in just a minute. But that's four of them that uh, we got there. Uh, just some local divers, that's Dick Brown on the, on the left. He, he wasn't a diver, and, uh, and the Hodges boy there, he wasn't a diver either, <laughs> but uh, that's me, and a, a guy on the right is a Navy diver. Yeah. Uh, that was a head of a UDT team that used to come down and spearfish with us. Man, that that was that was a loaded boat down right there. Yes, have, sir. Yeah, did y'all have a any problem hauling them in? Put them all in one boat? Or? Well, I had a 35 foot boat with a, I mean a 15 foot boat with a 35 Evan root on it, and with sometime you had to sit on top of a fish to come in. So y'all put those boat those fish in a 15 foot boat? Yeah. With and, Th those fish were killed 12 miles offshore, and in a 15-foot boat in rough weather, that's a tough trip. Uh, yeah, I, that, and also, uh, I wouldn't recommend it to a lot of people if they don't have experience. <laughs> we, that's a lot of fish, and you know, with three people in the boat and four of those big Warsaw, you had a load in rough weather. Oh, man. All right, this, this next picture here, is that? That's another Warsaw, and on the right there, I wanted to be sure to mention Charlie Lahan. Yeah. You know, we sort of pioneered the, the diving, especially the spearfishing here. That's Tommy Davis on the left, and, and uh, me there on the right. But that's my buddy Charlie Lahan. You see one of our big guns there that Charlie's holding? Yeah. And uh, that's what we had to shoot those big ones with. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, Yeah, that is a good picture there. Okay. This, yeah, that, this is familiar to a lot of the folks that used to be in this area, the old Stage 1. Old Stage 1. That was 107 foot deep, 13 miles offshore. Man, it had a lot of fish around it. It did. And you it, know, we used to go out there in February when it was cold and those Warsaw grouper would come in. Uh -huh. And we'd go down there and you'd see maybe 10 or 15 of them, just monster fish. And uh, we'd shoot two or three or four of them. And, uh, yeah. They, they were good eating, the smaller ones, but we always wanted to shoot the big ones for some reason. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, well, I just, uh, human nature and all. Yeah. Uh, all right, we got, let's go one more, and then we'll take a break. Oh, that's a cool one. That's another Goliath grouper. Uh, that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one, one of the things, did y'all ever weigh many of them? Did y'all try to weigh them? Not many of them. We, the, the largest one we got was 512 pounds. Wow. And that was a, that was a big fish. My main boat was a, a barber lap strike boat, you know, that yeah. take rough water. That was, yeah. that was the one I really liked. That well, was a good boat. What size motor do y'all have? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Mm. All right, well, we're going to get ready to take this break now. We've got a lot more pictures, and we'll be right back. Hi, oh, welcome back, folks. Here talking to Ronnie Groom, and I always ask him each month when he comes in about his customers that come down what they're talking about because I know a lot of times they come in and just talk about different things and also. Well, what's been going on with them? Uh, freshwater fishing and some offshore fishing, but it's just, it's been rough and rainy, but uh, everybody just keeps going. And, and uh, they are catching some freshwater oh, yeah. fish. They're catching some good freshwater fish. Good deal, good yeah. deal. And uh, all right, we're going to get back these pictures. We may not get all through them. we got a stack of them, but uh, this is fascinating. We're taking a glimpse back in our local history and local heritage on, on some of the original diving done right here in the Florida Panhandle. So uh, this next picture, Ronnie, what, what do you have on this one? Uh, that's another Goliath grouper. I think that one came off the tarpon. You know, we were the first ones to dive the tarpon, and yes. it was a tremendous wreck. And uh, we had a couple years there that we were the only ones diving on it. You know, and uh, so who was who was that in the group that was that was diving on it? You and uh, Bradley Pitts. Okay. Uh, let's see, uh, Burke Watney. Yeah, Pete Burke. Peters. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Lahan, uh, Buddy Voss. And a Jerry Sowell. That's that's a little core group. Yeah. You know, back then we called it shooter gigging. 
Yeah. There was no such, you know, we didn't know spear fishing, so we called it shooter gigging. Shooter gigging. And we had a little group that we'd meet and eat and have a good time, talk about old times. And it was, it was a lot of fun back then. And, you yeah. Know, and it was not many people out there, and we really enjoyed it. Well, yeah, I'm going to say, all uh, first one to get down on a tarp, and that had to have been a thrill just to get down there and look at all of the all the different things that you see. The first the time story. I dived on the tarp, and the water was crystal clear, and I went down about 20 foot, and it was just a, a dome of minnows over the wreck. You yeah. couldn't even see it. And all of a sudden, the, the minnows opened up, and a 50-pound black grouper came out of there, and I shot him. I didn't even get to the bottom, you know. I shot him on the way down. Wow, wow. That, that had to have been a thrill. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're going to talk, we'll talk about some shark attacks later, but uh, how deep of water was, it, was that in over there? It was about 100 foot, 96. How, how'd y'all find it? But that's interesting. We talked to some boat captains. We didn't have all this low ran stuff right. and everything yep. back then. And what we did, we ran out from, we, we went to the West Bay Road where we ran the Gulf yeah. to where we could see down the West Bay Road. Yeah, Highway 79. And we ran, yeah. I was backwards running the boat, keeping that uh, highway open, 79. Okay. We went out to the, we kept checking the depth till we knew how deep it was, 96 feet. And we got to 96 feet, we threw a buoy and we know we had to go about two or three hundred yards to the left of that. And then we <clears throat> threw another buoy and we drug my brother Raymond yeah. around behind the boat. And he'd say, Barracudas, Barracudas, they're going over there. And we'd go to where the Barracudas would go. And we drug the anchor and finally hooked into it. So you just followed the Barracudas because yeah. of the... they'd, they'd come toward him and then they'd go back to the wreck and we'd, we'd go in that direction. So he was a guinea pig, huh? Yeah, he was. <laughs> they wasn't dragging me behind. Right <laughs> uh, uh, that's a, that's a great story. Uh, and again, that's that's part of part of history that won't ever be repeated. You know, yeah. Everybody dies it, okay? Uh, all right now, uh, and I I know when y'all did y'all take turns going down or? No, uh, we, we really there was only about five or six of us that really did the diving spear okay. fishing. We had a lot of people that go with us because they left to go, but. Uh, We'd all go down together and okay. go down the anchor rope, you know, and go to the wreck. And we always use the tide right and everything. We we had to be careful because we, to, to start out with, we had very little experience with scuba. Yeah. And that's why I started teaching scuba diving. But uh, it was interesting, but it was dangerous, and we, luckily we made it through it. Wow. Okay, this, this next picture here, uh, that's some real grouper. <laughs> yeah, that's some black grouper there, some gags. That's my brother Raymond. He was a very good diver. Fascinating, fascinating pictures. I see old 57, I was looking at the background of pictures, so and I see old 57 Chevrolet, so this has been in the late 50s, early 60s. Yeah. What do you have here now? Uh, that's some Warsaw group, there's about four of them there. <clears throat> I shot three of those one morning at one, you know, right in one dive. We had a load of fish in that little 15 foot boat. I guess your neighbors, when you came back home and all and all these neighbors and all, just uh, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. Well, we had people just crowd around, you know, <laughs> cars stopped all up and down the street, <laughs> and uh, it was it was very. Easy. This is a another Goliath grouper. And the interesting thing about this, if you look down on his back, you can see where a shark attacked this thing. Oh man! See that? Yeah. That it's... half moon up top and down below there. Yeah. It had to be a big bad shark to hit a fish that big. Mm. But you can also see the spear right there. It's got a little bend in it here and there. Wow. Uh, that's something. Okay. That's. And what kind of fish? This is a. Uh, that's that's okay. more Warsaw, and that's one of the little neighbors. Like I said, people would gather around from. The whole neighborhood would come in. Huh? Would come in, want to watch that kind of stuff. All right. And this is another neighbor. Who, who, is this one of your neighbors here? Yeah, I don't remember her name. Were y'all living could, in the Cove? Or, or yeah, that was over on Benita Avenue. On Benita Avenue, okay. You can see that's pretty good sized fish. Okay. And this one is interesting for one reason. I want you to, well, John, I to show it. These, this is a shark bite situation? Right, the guy on the I, top I tell you what, left. let's go ahead and take a break, and we're going to come back and talk about this shark bite right here. Okay. All right, welcome back. See here with Ronnie Groom from CNG talking about... Uh, we're getting ready to talk about a shark story, but first let's go ahead and look at our fish and game forecast today, brought to us by Mark Coward of Edgewater Beach Realty, 832-6000. Our times, we're looking at 631 to 831 this morning, and this evening we're looking at 659 to 859. I'm going to say from 7 to 9 tonight, okay, if you can dodge some of this weather, and it'll be a good time to get out either this morning or late this afternoon. Ronnie, you know, we're just coming off shark week and all, and, and one of the <laughs> things, we, you know, everybody gets excited about it. Oh, and, yeah. And, Anytime you can tie in a, a true 
true story about sharks around this area, I think is, is appropriate to it. So I know you, you've lived the experience and also, so tell us about this, this, first of all, this picture right here is a cool picture of, of the, some of your diving buddies. Who are these folks? Okay, it's Ernie Grover on the left. I'm in the center at Tommy Davis on the right. And you wouldn't believe it, but that is Steve Sutherland on the bottom right down there. Steve Sutherland. Yeah, my good, very good friend, Steve. And Steve, <laughs> I've got you a copy of this too, Spuddy, so I'll get it to you. Well, good. You know, he was one of the early, early bow hunters, early divers. Yeah, he, he did some diving with us. And yeah. it, Steve, Steve was very active. Okay, now the guy you're talking about on the far left, uh, uh, top far left. Now tell us, tell us the story of this, this shark attack. That's Ernie Grover. We were okay. diving one morning. Uh, Ernie was in his boat uh, and had a guy running a boat for him, and uh, Bradley Pitts and I were in my boat, and uh, we were checking a line of buoys along off Long Beach, and the cobia were coming in at that time of year. It was in uh, February, uh, April, I think it was. Okay, and the cobia were there, and. Uh, I was diving on a wreck at the end of the buoy line about 100 yards from where the, the guy that got bit was diving and he, he shot a ling, a cobia, spear pulled out and he was bleeding and he bent over to load his gun again and the shark got him right on the rear. Ooh. Just clamped him and he stuck his hand down and got it in the shark's mouth and the shark let go and left and that was it. But he, he received 72 stitches. There was a lot of punctures in his hand where he made contact with the shark's mouth and he had the, the bite on his rear end down there, but uh, it, w it was a terrifying thing, although it could have been a lot worse. His wetsuit right. really did a lot to help him. Yeah. Took up a lot of that bite, but uh, that, that, we rushed him to the hospital, and the time he got out of the, I was the first one in his room, and uh, he said, what do you reckon bit me? He didn't even really know at that stage. I said, it had to been a shark. Yeah. Bite's too that, big that for big. a barracuda or anything, you know. But it got blown into a big story, and I went to the News Herald right straight from the hospital and told them what happened, and it got blown up again. <laughs> the headlines. <laughs> yeah, all the headlines, yeah. And shark attack, but it was it was quite an experience. Yeah, and of course he survived. And, and, yeah, he survived yeah. and uh, doing well and yeah. but, got but, a tail to tail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a situation where uh, he probably he isolated himself from y'all. Right. Okay, so I first, tried to tell him to dive with us, the three yeah. of us to dive together, but he said, no, I can kill more fish by myself. Yeah. But he found out that wasn't the best Then he had that Kobe probably running around yeah. and bleeding, bleeding and, and, and yeah. uh, panicking, and so that just attracted him. So right. sharks, we all know sharks are always out there, but you sort of just, you know, the usually yeah. aren't going to bother you, but you put yourself in that situation. The then. sad thing about it, the one that gets you, you usually don't even see him. Yeah. Ernie didn't see that shark at all you know he experienced a bite and it was over yeah that's odd you probably think it was a bull shark or probably a bull shark uh, I, 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 yeah. and I would think he was in the six seven foot size he was not a monster yeah yeah all right let's look at this other picture here check this one out right here tell us about these guys back when uh, we first organized a search and recovery team we did it first with Doc Daffin and this is Tullis Easterlin here yeah on the left is Carlos Atkinson and Mike Helms, and I can't remember the other guy's name. Myself, uh, Jerry, and uh, Bobby there. They, uh -huh. we, had a, we had a team organized there for years where we did all the search and recovery for the Sheriff's Department. We, we, you know, we dived up bodies and we did recovered evidence and that type of thing, and we were very active in helping the, the Sheriff's Department. Yeah, so y'all were the original search and, and right. uh, recovery t team. Right. Uh, y'all. When, when y'all, uh, I guess y'all had to look at a lot of uh, rivers and lakes and We ponds. dived in terrible conditions. You never had a good condition to yeah. dive in good clear water. There's always stumps and trees. You're in rivers and swamps and snakes. I remember yeah. looking up and seeing snakes swimming over your water moccasins. and It was an experience, to say the <laughs> least. <laughs> you know, I, I, was, I was thinking, if I'm back in that swamp and air and all, I think... What would scare me would be the gator, but you said the snake would be. Yeah. The moccasin would. The moccasins were, was the thing that I was worried about, but yeah. we never had a bad experience with them. Yeah. We were just very careful, but usually we were groping around, going through trees underwater, you know, and it, yeah. it was a it was a bad situation, but uh, we enjoy, we we did it because somebody needed to do it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we did that. Well, that's because y'all were ahead of y'all's time in, in forming that group right there, and uh, yeah. with the sheriffs and all. Especially, we had so much water around here. We had a yeah. lot of had a lot of situations where you had to go out. When uh, somebody, yeah. say in Leon County or Gaston County, wouldn't have that many. Yeah, we got you. called over to Tallahassee to do some uh, body recovery over there one yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's, let's look at this this next picture here. Uh, tell us about this. This is you're a teacher now, right? Yes. Yeah, 
started teaching scuba diving. Uh, we, uh, I found out that when we started diving, we didn't know anything. I got a hold of an old Navy manual and read about it you know, as much as I could and uh, started teaching classes uh, at CNG Sporting Goods. The first one I taught, uh, there was no charge. You just bring your equipment or we'd furnish it and we taught them to dive, but they wouldn't pay attention. <laughs> that, you know, it was a it was a Chinese fire drill, so I started charging them, and then the people started paying attention. Well, they started paying the money. They wanted to listen to you. Yeah, to we, get literally, money we literally taught hundreds and hundreds of people to scuba dive for over a 25-year period, and we never had an accident. That, that's a, that's a, remarkable, a remarkable record, and it, uh, I attribute to you as a teacher and a community leader in doing that because if you were trying to do that now, you'd have so many hoops to jump through with OSHA and, oh, and, yeah. and Safety Council and all that. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's not bad but uh, or good, but I mean, back then you sort of learned as you went along. We learned the hard way, plus I, I was certified through the National Association of Skin Diving Schools, and I went off to a, to a certification there course they had in, in Wisconsin. But uh, we taught a lot of people, and a lot of them enjoyed it. And we, we don't ever know of losing a guy that we taught or yeah. having a problem. No, that, that, that's something to be proud of and all. I, you led me to this, this next statement here. Uh, you know, as outdoors, when we will go through the different stages, and mm -hmm. some of the guys build Lamanac, and they were mentioning this on, on Facebook the other night. You, the first, you, you're going to kill them all or catch them all. Yeah. And then we, then we go into the next phase where, where uh, we want to get a trophy, a trophy hunt, a trophy catch. Yeah. And, and then our third and final phase, I think, uh, we just want to enjoy the experience. That's right. And that's where you and I both are now. That's right. You know, I love to deer hunt. and. The most pleasure I have now is taking grandkids and kids, and and I don't really care about, about taking a yeah. game or anything. I just yeah. enjoy going and having a good time, good food, good people. Yeah, and, and that's really what what it's all about. That's right what there it's all about. And, uh, and sharing and spreading, and trying to get these young people involved. Right, in involved, get them involved. And, involved. and uh, but uh, this, what what we're looking at now, you just saw a, a, a replica of what of what happened in the early days of diving. And, and Ronnie, thank you so much for taking those pictures. A lot of people oh, yeah. didn't take pictures of them. Yeah, I've, I've got piles of other pictures, you know, hunting yeah. and fishing and diving, and okay. I wouldn't take anything for them. And we'll show more later. We've got to get out of here. Ronnie, thank you so much, buddy. And, folks, thank you all for watching. Do something good for somebody today. And God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.